Right. Well, a big warm welcome to you all tonight. And wow, what a crowd have we got here tonight. Not just virtually, but in presence here. So we've got a great crowd tonight. We've got nearly 400 people signed up tonight, which I think is just amazing. Just great. But tonight we've, we're joined from a, an ostacious crowd. We've got people live here tonight with us. We've got the great Bart Calls, not just virtually. He's actually going to be here present telling us, you know, how he collects off his stallions at Shokamola. He collects off 30, 40, 50 stallions a day. We moan when we collect off 20. So, you know, he, but he does get up at four o'clock in the morning to do it. We've got the great Shirley Light from Brendan Studd virtually here tonight. Uh, so I'm afraid we've got two more hours before the watershed. But for every swear word she has, she has to donate five pounds to Nature's Safe. So I think Nature's Safe is going to be saved tonight. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so we've got a great audience here. We've got EJ uh, is going to be obviously you know EJ well. I, yeah, I've actually got Josh here as well live. Uh, we've got Sarah as well in in, in the background. Uh, Faye asking the question, uh, getting the questions coming to us. So you out there, and I think you know it's 300, 400 people, and there's about 25 different countries. I know in the Middle East you're tuning. It's a bit late for you, but it's about 11 o'clock at night. So thank you for staying up with us. Um, but uh, keep these questions coming. Let us know where you're calling from. It's always bright, good to see what countries you're from as well. We've even got the great presence of Kate here tonight as well, which is good. And Pam. And we've got a, a bit of an audience as well. So that's, that's just brilliant. Uh, we've got Amy behind the scenes, as always. India's filming tonight, so we can blame her if she drops the camera. <laughs> uh, but get those questions coming in. We've got Pam in the, in the lab as well. So let us know where you come from. Get those questions in. But tonight takes a lot of work to put these nights on and it doesn't, you know, it, it does cost a bit of money. And we've got to thank Quattro products, uh, the rubber matting. We use them in all our stables, the, the rubber matting and have to met Aiden from Quattro. It's quite brilliant. So if you need your uh, collection area down in your stables, then I can't uh, recommend them enough. Quattro have been uh, a long leading uh, supplier of resin and rubber matting for the agricultural industry and the equine industry for 25 years. And I have to admit, they've been quite outstanding. So what's on tonight? Uh, we're going to look in about uh, how you um, look at your stallion when you're breeding. We're going to do some live collections. So what could possibly go wrong? So if you're looking for that on the edge stuff, uh, we might have stallions fail to collect from. We're going to do a ground collection uh, of, of Josh's stallion. Um, so yeah, the poor chap, we had to wake him up tonight to do it. That's the stallion, not Josh. <laughs> uh, so um and then we're gonna collect off a three-year-old stallion we've only been collecting off him for two weeks so bart's gonna handle him how he handles him in in, in germany as well so that you know you're gonna learn a lot so um it's really important to sort of get those questions in if you are breeding from stallions or you've got any issues we're going to talk about how we train them on the dummy uh all that uh, uh to start with so also Least but not least, I forgot all about her. Desiree, how could I forget about you, Desiree? <laughs> I'm going to get in trouble there. So, Desiree, are you there? Are you yes, I'm here. On time. I had a bad calls moment tonight. Yeah, no, so I don't think you were on late. time. That was the problem. You weren't on time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. It was really so Desiree, you know, really, we have got an amazing team. You know, you know De uh, Shirley's had stallions for years and years. Bart's had your yeah, handle stallions if there's ever a team brought together that knows about stallions it's these guys so you know if you want to learn a bit about collecting and all the tips and tricks how to collect semen off your stallion and all the issues that you might come across uh please let us know so thank you desiree for, for joining but you're okay over there i'm very fine i hope you too also i wish i could be there that is a yeah, little well, bit of a shame yeah, yeah, we yeah. got we, we got Shirley bringing yeah. up, so maybe we're <laughs> equal tonight on you know male and female. So uh, she's no. uh, oh, it's pretty good. I hope you help me a little bit, Shirley, because it's necessary with those men. Right, I think we absolutely keep, oh, come <laughs> on then, Shirley. And, and Shirley, we have to say she sported a pair of shorts tonight as well. So yeah, yeah. So yeah, <laughs> we I can't think, let tell us when I, the short wore, can I, we? I, I think you pull it off. Anyway, Bart, let's let's come on. Let's have a look at this okay. So first of all. Before you ever start a uh, semen collection or if you're buying a stallion, I think it's about choosing a stallion. We're going to have a look at this stallion here now. Um, so what do you look for when you're picking a breeding stallion? Uh, and we're going to prepare the stallion for the collection process. But 
Um, this is the stallion called Win Win. He's, he's, he's one of our stallions here. We'll talk about him. Well, um, Sarah will be able to tell us a bit more about him in a minute. Um, so, this, this stallion, how old is he, Sarah, now? Um, 19. Sorry, put you on the spot there. Yeah. <laughs> You're busy checking your Facebook there. <laughs> Come on in, Shirley. Come on. Uh, so, you know, you've bred a lot of horses. You you start them off quite young sometimes, don't you? Collecting off them, just getting going to start with. Yeah, I used a four-year-old. Um, for me, the very first thing was to be told. Yeah. Irrelevant of whether or not they can jump or not. If they're not good types, don't use them. You know, simple as that. They have to be correct. And then we won the Yeah. And that's it. And that, not complete because type is type is personally thing. Yeah. But okay, you have to be correct. Correct. Sure. Yes, correct. Good food. Good yeah. foot. Yeah, good food. I do the translation. Oh, oh the <laughs> <Beat. Beat. laughs> okay. yeah. 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 Good feet, uh, good long lines that you also if it just for breeding, we need to study. We should be a father and not just a sport horse. Yeah. And that's what I think at the moment. We get too much sport horses um, for breeding. But the people have to look oh. that it's also a father horse. And and when you look at a stallion, we, we, we look at some thoroughbred stallions as well. Because just say you get any stallion that you're coming into the breeding shed, so it doesn't matter whether it's got, you know, what. Are you looking to so you can cope with a busy stud season, a breeding stud? I mean, what is some of the fundamental things that you think is really important? See if he's healthy. So if you look at him here, he is really glad, fine, good, good looking hair, really open, good eye. Then we check the skin is okay. Maybe we do carefully check the testicle, have a look. If they are both there. Have you warmed your hands up? Bob? Yeah, yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get the machine from Motilus. <laughs> yeah, but my hands are quite good for testing the test because this horse <laughs> he is a little bit older and he has really good full testicles. So also that's important, not only the size of the testicles, but also the the consistency. So if it's like a sponge or if it's a good Past testicle, and in this case, even for his age, it's really top good. Uh, so yeah, I think so. he will have yeah, very good team. And uh, Desiree, do, do you, should we be checking these uh, testicles every season, or through the season, or just once, once every now and again? How often should we check these testicles for their firmness and what they're like? Oh, very often. I do it every time when I wash the stallion. You palpate the testicle every time. Oh. Yeah, yeah, always, yeah. 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 It, it, He's pleased anyway, Charles. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> you see my hand is done. My hand. Oh, God. Really? <laughs> I'll, I'll stand here. Uh, uh, every time. Yeah. Um, but it is. I mean, joking about all your people that are watching this around the world. The, it's a bit like putting your hand in the mare and feeling the cervix. It tells you an awful lot. If you feel those testicles and they're soft, that's telling a story. And if one testicle is softer than the other, that testicle is most probably not producing good enough semen uh, or as good a semen as the other testicle. They tell you an awful lot about. Um, and what about sort of the pain size, Shirley? I mean, can that really, can that really stop them from, you know, collecting and things like that? Yeah, for sure. I think if you've got a stallion that is sore through his back or obviously his hocks, which is the two parts that are taking the most work when they start thrusting, a stallion can get off and refuse to ejaculate. So always, you know, listen to your stallion. They, oh, they yeah. can talk to you. Look and, at and you have to make sure you listen to your stallion. And any male yeah. gelding. To but read they, your horse. Yeah, they, they can talk to you. I, again, I think it's so underestimated pain. The three things that I think well, is pain and stress, I think are the, sometimes the hidden, hidden things. Stress, how can stress affect the, the stallion semen, do you think, Desiree? Oh, very much. I think stress is the most important thing for the quality of the semen. Yeah, stress has got so much influence and don't underestimate it. You have to imagine that some older stallions, they compete and they do a lot of breeding at the same time. It was really, really a lot. And for some stallions, stress, yeah, it, you, it's really affecting the semen. You can see it. Yeah, it's everything. 
We're losing you a little bit, Desiree. I don't know whether that's... <laughs> <laughs> I can hear you very well. Yeah. You can hear me now. Yeah, yeah it's, yeah, it's no, a little bit better. Yeah. But no, I think you're right. I think stress is the one of the hidden things because it's sometimes very difficult to see. What, this horse doesn't look stressed. Well, the dog doesn't look stressed at all. But uh, they can, some, sometimes they can't look stressed, but they are. And that affects the semen quality. And also yeah. what it does is putting mares around them, it increases that seminal fluids, especially you see this in the thoroughbred world if they... If they over squat and tease uh, a lot of stallions and they go to cover a mare, they can build up their seminal fluids and have a, a real big issue to the semen. So stress can have so stress and pain. If you can uh, mitigate them, you can get on the uh, on the collection side. So that's a very brief. We've got a lot to get through tonight. So I think that's a very. Is there anything else you want to mention about the stallion side? Uh, but I think oh, I just, it, it, part, fitness, uh, fit, getting your stallion fit for the stud season. Wow, you know, don't just imagine you can bring him out. And just jumping on the dummy. Yes, a lot of stallions can do that. But fitness, if you want to, that stallion to collect up every day needs to be fit. Especially in an older one yeah. or a younger one. Yes. You know, like he's 19, I've got 26 year old at home. And yeah, he's back in ridden work now, getting him fit so that he can do the season. Would, would you agree with yeah, the older agree ones? Complete. We even uh, to protect them, let them walk 20 minutes. To stop injuries. Just right or launch or on a walker, uh, on a um, treat walker, just that they are warm, that everything is fine, the muscles are good, because you don't you don't need to forget they jump out, they get five, six hundred kilos only on the back feet. So yeah, to protect them, it's very important to let them get warm and use them uh, on, on a warm side and not just take them out. Sometimes in the summer you can do, but normally in this weather, it's very important to make them warm and let them walk. Yeah, I'd agree with you. Right, we've had one question come in. Somebody said, how do you measure the testicles? Now, <laughs> you've got, <laughs> <it's big again. laughs> yes, yeah. you got these calipers. Um, um, yeah, Bart, what do you think of these for measuring? Okay, that is possible to do. At the, that's new, not new, but not older. New. Oh. Uh, Today, if it's new, we use no dresser because yeah. then you can yeah. exactly measure. But this in is this very case, difficult. if you have you are in the field or something, you have not to ultrasound, sound. So you do with this, and it's very nice to make the long and the. the but it's quite body. difficult with some sign because they yeah. take the they take the testicles up, yeah. especially. Therefore, it's with the head. So, uh, so your answer to your question is much better with ultrasound. We've got a few people from all over the world who what, come on, give us yeah. a few shout outs. So we've got uh, people watching from Canada, quite a few people. Canada, well, it's about middle of the day for you yeah. over there. Yeah, so South Africa. South Africa. Great. I'm coming over in South Africa to collect some rhinos in, in July. Oh, and Bart as well, I think, in Germany. Yeah. Go ahead, also, so yeah. Yeah. You have to <laughs> friend. Great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Egypt, Belgium. Egypt, Romania, Belgium. Romania. Romania. Brilliant. Keep it coming. We want to hear where you're from. Right, let's go outside the box now. Um, right, we've got, uh, we've got we've got the, the Twemlow's vets here tonight as well. Petra and Rebecca, you might have sent mares up here. Uh, they both probably handling your mares, but um, AI and the mares. But before the stud season starts, it's really good to get that standing prepped. And one thing that we do do, is sell it, uh, Sarah, I've got your name. Yeah. <laughs> Sarah will tell you a bit about it. It's a five star fertility. This is a really good supplement. Um, and uh, yes, you need to really be on your stallions about six weeks. But how much is it, Sarah? And what we're we doing tonight? Well, it's a bit of a deal. Okay, well, disclosure is a minute because for 24 hours, we're doing 25% off in our five star facility. Um, head to our website and you can buy both from the shop. This one is a month supply, um, and this one is a five month supply. And if you work out the pricing, you're getting a month free on this. So. It does pay to buy the big tub and that will last you for the stud season. Um, the small tubs uh, with the offer are 48.75 delivered and the larger tubs with the offer are 221 delivered. So this tub at the minute tonight, 24 hours, will save you £73. So it is really worth uh, ordering now if you're considering it. Um, our stallions here have been on it now for two years and it's definitely proven to oh. increase motility yeah. for sure. Honestly, libido, we'll talk about libido a bit later, but honestly, it really makes a massive difference. I must admit, I was going through my storyboard tonight 
And I said, put some 25%. I actually <laughs> went to the office and said, Sarah, 25%. That's pretty sure our profit wiped out. But so, um, anyway. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I was slightly questioning that before. Uh, um, and so, right, how, how happy does... Sorry. It's okay, you carry on. It's fine. I was going to say, Desiree, how happy is it uh, to keep your stallion happy? And, uh, you know, what a happy stallion? Happy stallion, <laughs> happy semen, of course. It's the same like, uh, yeah, uh, we were mentioned that before, eh? happy wife, happy man. You're going to say the same like your man, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we mentioned, that, yeah, the most important, you know, the base is the stallion. Everything started with, with the stallion. So if you have a problem in the lab or the, the semen processing yeah. is not so good, always go back to the base and that is in the stable. Look how the stallion is, and I agree with God. Try to read the stallion. Yeah, we're losing the connection a little bit with you, Desiree. There, we might get you back in a minute. And now, is it better now or not? Uh, anyway, if you're still here, right? Yeah. Um, the other thing is, if, um, is about the the stuff that we're going to put in there. Oh, Desiree. Yeah, I'm still here. Yeah, it's a bit bit slow tonight. Yeah, can you hear? I'm still here. Yeah. It's not so good. Let me see. Oh. We can hear, everyone else can hear Desiree. And now. Oh, we can hear her. But and we. we yeah. Is it better uh, now? Let's just keep talking about table. Technical. So let, let her carry on talking. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So, uh, okay. if you can hear us okay now. Uh, I can, yeah. So we'll through the bits and bridles. Uh, that we got here for uh, handling stallions. So, do you use these parts sometimes? Yes, I have one stallion who is really, really scared about the bit, and then he is feel not happy. So, yeah. I only use this with the launch because I always work with the launch. You will see later um, that I use. I don't like to use these ones. They are for me not good enough. Uh, it's too hard, and it's too much on the stallion on one side. This I have seen, but I don't like. I think if you use this for a stallion, you should manage your stallion better. That's we, my opinion, because it's really hard. We use this on some stallions, and I have to admit, this, we, we, I like it. To only, teach. Well, if you get a stallion that bolts, so most stallions, we only use it on a few, a few, but uh, when they bolt, this can really stop a stallion. So I know your stallion is most probably uh, slightly better trained, than, you know, some, but we find it can really sometimes just, and then you teach them and then they respect you. Okay. Uh, but we do, okay. but, but we use it upside down. So people think it's that way up, but it's, it goes that way on the nose and it pulls down. But so I think in a way, this is sometimes better than really yanking hard on a chicken in the mouth. So, so I, I, it depends entirely yeah. on each tools. Yeah. I, I love, I use these for London young ones. Really? really good, but I, I've never collected off one. Yeah, and same as you, I've got Cicero one. He has to have a head collar. I can't collect a male. No big, not even a rabbit. And ninety-five of the stains are used only because they are written just the normal bit for the size Finish, and then do with the launch. Yeah, that we will show later. Yeah, so we're, it's got a really good technique later for, for the lunch. You're right. You've got to. A... I have got a question. It is relating to testicular asymmetry. Um, it's a big word, but Eve, yeah. <laughs> Evelina um, has asked whether, uh, what what would you consider to be disqualifying, um, like what kind of testicle um, asymmetry um, from, from a stallion from breeding? So some of them have one hanging correctly, while the other one is very high and very close. And um, yeah, it's, so what would you say would, would perhaps disqualify a stallion from breeding based on Problem is it depends whether it's genetic or not, and that's what you've got to define. Because some stud books will not allow certain uh, stallions uh, if they uh, sometimes will take tests with the hands up. But uh, it depends on the stud book, and it depends whether it's her hereditary or not. But you'd be surprised how stallions will work perfectly right with one testicle. Yeah, uh, they can overcompensate very easily. We've had a lot of stallions here with one testicle, um, so I think it's really down to the stud book the size. And sometimes when we palpate these testicles, we'll get some stallions where they're quite soft, but they still produce good seed. You know, I'm quite surprised sometimes. But generally, the testicle's nice and firm. But 
Um, so I think you've got to really see what the stallion produces, but I think it's down to the stud book a little bit. I don't know whether you have any. For sure, with the stud book, because uh, if, if I look in Germany, the stud book says if there is only one or one very small, they will not use the, um, they will not give you the permission yeah. as a, a breeding stallion. My opinion is if you have one testicle good down yeah. and one very high, Look at the semen, but I think you have to take out the small high one because he disturbed the good quality of the semen. Yes, yeah. So if one yeah. could be producing so, quality, yeah. Do you agree with that, Desiree? I totally agree with that. Yeah, yeah. Ah, well. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we're going to talk a bit more about that. We're going to bandage the knees up. The other thing we always put a bandage the knees on the dummy. Uh, we've got these skins now that we can put on. So the ones that rub the knees really badly, uh, we put these extra layers on. Remember, if you're if your stallion rubs its knees and it's you're going through a stud season, it's very hard to get them back normal. So we do it uh, automatically on, on, on that. Okay. So we'll see. Josh will show us how you bandage your knees. So come go on, on in. Oh, thank you. Right, come on over. So we like to bandage the stone all the way around. This is just to make sure that they, we really protect their tendons and all their joints, especially when they're collecting. And of course, it's a lot of weight on all their joints and a lot of pressure. So it's really important that we do that. So first thing I'm going to show you is how we put on one of the front bandages. This is the same with all four legs. So I always put the pad around so that the little seam is facing the front. It's not applying any pressure on any of the tendons. And then I'm going to start from the top. And I'm going to go from front to back. So from the front of the leg to the back of the legs. And I'm going to go down about a quarter of a way each time until I get to the elastic in a minute. So what I do is once I get to here, I'm just going to go underneath the fatlock joint, come up round, come back over. And if you if you if you're really sad, you can get like a little a little triangle in there. Some people know what I'm what I'm talking about. And that's quite cool if you can get that. And then nice even pressure all the way back up. So you get to the top. And this is going to just protect them while they're in the collection area. And then the next one, which is going to be something a bit more unusual, this isn't your normal bandage, it's going to be a knee bandage. Ta-da! Here's one we've paid earlier. Yeah, here's one we've paid earlier. Blue Pia. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go up as high as I can, but still covering the knee. Same type of situation, I'm going to go from the front to the back here, make sure all the knee's covered. And this is really important because you just don't want any rubs. As soon as they start getting rubs on the dummy, really hard to stop them from rubbing. Go from the top. I use boots and we put them on quite tight because yeah. obviously once they start rubbing them it's when, they're, when they're on the phantom, yeah. once they actually get the friction, they will naturally slide down. So I always tend to go a little bit higher than what I actually want. Yeah. And then that allows for the slippage. Yeah. And yeah, it's, uh, it's a yeah. pain. Yeah. We do also with boots. Yeah. And yeah. if they have shoes, they get um, jumping. Yeah. Especially behind, because they, yeah. have, they sometimes do like this and treat on the back feet. So therefore, it's important to protect the behind. Yeah, I use um, gaffer tape around the nail prints as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just so they don't rip the phantom yeah. because they're so okay. bloody. That's five well, it's expensive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's expensive if the stallion rips the phantom. Yeah. Yeah. You know, with, with a slightly raised clench. And if, again, if you've got a competition horse and they're shod, it happens. It happens. And we we do the back legs as well, Josh. Do we? Yeah, we do the back legs. So on the support bandages, we do all the way around, and then just the knee one on the two front legs, and we just make sure it crosses over on the side. So they can still bend their knees, so it's nice and easy for them to jump up onto the dummy. Yeah, brilliant. Thank Perfect. you, Joshua. We'll see you in a see, minute. Uh, see you in the collection area. We're, we're going to head on down to the AV room, prepare the AVs, and uh, okay. well, thank, thank you very you much. much. Yeah, it's fine. Thank you very much. Good. All right. Yeah. Have you lost? Oh, Louis. Yeah. Um, yeah. So just on the uh, questions, sometimes. Well, we're getting to the keep coming with us, India. Um, on the side of libido, because there's quite a few issues with certain stadiums uh, with the libido issues. But how do you cope with that side? So this is a very 
difficult thing. Um, for, for first of all, you have to see what your stallion like. Your stallion like. What I say before, you have to read your stallion. Uh, the libido is a different thing. Some stallions have very good, or the most sensitive. We can feed some stuff. We can give even eggs. I did a long time for two cents every day, two eggs. Scramble the poach. Just go inside. Two row eggs. Two, two row eggs. eggs every day. And how long before you want to collect? How long? Before? But everything this was five, six weeks. Uh, like, like the uh, also like the, the, the supplement. Yeah. Because it had to run. Then. Um, we have them on special lights from, from the AU here from Ireland, from LU, what's it called? Special lights. Uh, uh, so we work with the light, yeah, with the, yeah. With the light program, what is uh, very interesting also. So I put them during the summer, it's a short daylight because the summer is good and we have a lot of lights outside. Now, uh, in the winter, in October, um, it's off in November, December, to start before the season. We make already with the lights the long daylight. That means it is 16 hours a day of blue uh, light. And therefore, they look, they, we simulate that the storm is coming. Yeah, yeah. So it's, so it's, it helps. So it's not so like, it's yeah. 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 so it's not like to not yeah, just like make as well um, on this. Um, yeah. So, Desiree, can you still hear us? Yeah. I can still hear you. Yeah, yeah, very good. Um, so I think we're better now because we're on the Wi-Fi. Just oh. spin around. We did just see we've got a good group of people here today. We've got Louie. Uh, if you if you it's starting to go on Big Brother, so if anybody's watching all <laughs> that, so uh, um, yeah, yeah. anyway, come on in. We're talking about the ABs. Um so before you start any uh, successful collection. We've looked very quickly at the stallion. We could talk a whole hour about how you prepare your stallion, but fitness, stress, uh, um, pain management, making sure they're ready for that. The next thing is preparing the AV. Um, now, there's always different types of AVs out there, and it's quite often down to stallion's preference and quite often down to collector's preference. And I know um, Bart used to use some different ones, but we've got one here uh, called the Aboto um, uh, AV. Um, so this is, uh, is it Marco? Um, exactly, Marco Alvarenga. Marco Maybe he's listening. Yeah. It's very nice, we have it. The so only, like a the smaller next, version of the old Colorado. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah. The only thing what they should make better, in my opinion, is this, because for small hands, it's very hard. So we are used with, with small things or a little. And with this is very hard, and if you are uh, staying, you try to go in, and you break your head. Yeah, you, you so well, hands to be. Not all the is like the rigidness, do they? Yeah, but no. this, this is for the, for yeah. the holders. It's good, yeah. yeah. So you have this one, we've got the inner AV. The interesting one, what type of AVs you use? Have we got any, I've got any poll questions that I should have asked. I'll be getting in trouble now. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, on a, as a poll question coming up. Sorry, Amy, for not doing this one. What do you generally handle your stallion in uh, uh, at home? Is it chiffney, bridle, head collar, or, or do you use the nose ring? It would just be interesting how many of you do that. Um, so uh, anyway, while you're doing that, uh, this is my sort of uh, our favourite type that we tend to use in Missouri. Same one you use, surely. Yeah, yeah. It I comes in three different easy. sizes. You've got the, the large, so you've got your shires. Um, or your Clydesdales and things like that. We've got um, the medium size, one that we generally 80% of stallions will fit this size, fine. Uh, and then you've got the small ones uh, for the smaller boys. Uh, but people say, oh, I've got to, I've got to be careful what the case, uh, what breed it is. And people <laughs> jump on me and say, oh, well, uh, it can't, you can't uh, pick on the, the other breeds. But, Say we had a Clydesdale, they might say, well, what size of AV? It's down to the size of these. Some of these bigger horses have very small AVs. What you have got to do is make sure the glands of the penis are, come to the end of it. Uh, but generally, the, this, this AV. Now, this AV we find very easy to use, but it's harder to fill. We'll show you how to fill it in a second. And it's harder to keep clean. But Bart, this is the one that you tend to use. Yeah, I, I like to use the Hanover one. Um, not because of the AV, but more because 
it's very easy with the liner because if you have to do a lot of stellings in a short time, it's more easy. Uh, if you have, like we in our place, 40, 50 stellings, so you should have 40, 50 AVs a day, clean them everything every time. So we take just the liner and take it, uh, put it in, take it out and finish. Yeah. That's more easy for this. We have also a few sizes, but uh, different sizes, it? you can have in this size in a little bit wider and smaller also. Right. Okay. I thought it just came one size. No, 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 no. And you use a liner on all your stains, though. Well. Yeah. They, they, learn with, with they, they only learn yeah. with it. You can do without, but. I can do that. Yeah. You're bored, why not? It's yeah. Same, like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then you have to start to clean again. So and do you, I was worried with this one. It's got this little gap here. Do they ever push the penis through there? It can be. Oh, that sounds painful. But, 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 but that is what I say all the time. You have to look at your stain. So you yeah. can see, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. you take the bigger one. Or I have one, but I use also for open the gather, cut it off, make it open. Uh, Desiree, so use for both. Desiree, what do you use most of the time? Hanover. Hanover AV. Only XCD right. Hanover. Yeah. And sometimes. I think we've got a UK Brexit issue going yeah. on. You know, in the UK, <laughs> we're using the Missouri. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, but so, some stallions we do the Colorado, and but it's more, it's like a, a little bit of feeling, but but say, you know, if he doesn't collect very nice in Hanover then, and he needs a little bit more space or a little bit more, yeah, then you take the Colorado. But uh, I always start with Hanover. Always. It's a very nice, easy, small AV. Yeah. We opened it up to the chat actually, um, yeah. and it's interesting to see uh, a lot of Missouri, Colorado. There's an Inra in there as well, and and the Hanover makes one or two appearances. But it seems to be the Missouri and Colorado that are the most That's popular. It. Right. Okay. Yeah. Have we got any other countries coming in, or have we, we we've got uh, well, Spain's just come in, just joined us. Um, this this plenty. Estonia, Morocco, the US. Yeah. All right. Hello, so hi to Estonia. Hi to Morocco. Oh, Massimo yeah. says hello. He's still alive. <laughs> oh, Massimo, <laughs> where's my invite? We've got to come and see you. Yeah. We need to do a webinar over with you. Uh, I think you to say hola. Hola. <laughs> um, so, right. With the, so, we're going to fill this AV up. Um, and there's different ways of filling these AVs. We'll come over here now and let me know if we've missed anything out. Uh, we can use this with or without a line, and we spoke about line, isn't it, Bart? Yeah, I put it there. Yeah. 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 So uh, some liners you get with with uh, filters already in them, and some you can use or without filters. We'll talk about gel in a minute. Um, so we're going to teach you people uh, quite at the start with these AVs. I find these thermometers quite good. Um, you, it's about uh, uh, three parts boiling water, one part cold. If you have this about sort of uh, 60 degrees, um, you can actually, uh, round about that sort of temperature, you're going to be not far off spot on when you're filling this AV. We have this already set up here for this. Um, so we have an underwater sink uh, set at, at 60 degrees. And well, it's usually between 60 and 70, I think it's about 65. Put this on and, and, and away you go. Uh, so that's one of the ways you can fill these up with that. And you just fill that all the way, Thales, and then yeah. decide what stand yeah. is I, I see in some places they say they put 2.3 litres. Yeah, of water. I do. I, I measure uh, and, it. And it must be, we always fill it up as tight as we can because it's much easier to get the water out. Yeah. Because we can't measure it with all through this system. Uh, but it's very hard to put water back in, yes. obviously. So fill it up as good. So you measure it, measure it so you know exactly what your stallion wants. Yeah, so I routinely go 2.8 hot in and then depending on air temperature. So right. my place, I, especially with the young stallion, if we're training it, I might want him a little bit hotter to start with because it's going to take a bit more time. Yeah. Um, and obviously the material loses heat much quicker than the Colorado. Yeah. The benefit of Colorado is it stays hot. What did you say about uh, the, the air temperature? If you work with the liner, that's for everybody. If you work with the liner and outside is warm, and we have the last time a little bit more hot summers, um, it's more than 30 degrees. You have to be careful. Don't put too hot inside because the liner makes it more warm. Yeah. 
So therefore, you have to be careful. Use your hand with the glove to go inside to feel if it is not too hot. Because then, if it's outside hot, it can get too hot. So it's very important to check always with your own hands what you take. Um, I've, I've got a question from um, um, Henry Vaughan, or Vaughan Henry. Hi, Henry. Um, have, have you, uh, or has anyone ever tried the Japanese Nishikawa AV? Uh, it's apparently solid aluminium case and, you know, natural feel, but with marginal liners. Don't know. Uh, Desiree? No, nope. never heard of it, actually. Never heard of it. No, sorry, that one. I'm always interested in new devices. Um, you put the leather case on on, on these these ones. Uh, it's quite good to put a washer on because it pulls through, and then literally you just do it up like this, and, and the case is on, and it's literally ready to go. Uh, right. Again, that's good because you need to get ready. Yeah, yeah, we're fine. Just a quick question, Talis. Obviously, you've got the underwater hot water system. Yeah. So you know that's set up at a certain degree. Yeah. So you know what that temperature is. But the people at home, you put a thermometer in that? And well, I don't put the thermometer in. No, we do it all from uh, from here. We're doing it. So we measure this before it goes. Right. Okay. Yeah. So you take temp uh, temperature, but we don't, don't we take don't, the temperature. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we don't put the uh, uh, thermometer in here. Uh, but we just do that to take the temperature as it goes in. It's usually yeah. spot on there. Yeah. Uh, standing ejaculates are three main fractions. You get your sperm extraction, or your pre-ejaculate sperm extraction, your gel. Um, and um, Desiree, just tell me about the gel. Should we be filtering the gel as the standing ejaculates, or could we filter it afterwards? No, be, uh, during ejac ejaculate. Yeah. Always put a filter in. We'll always put a filter inside. Why, why can't we do it afterwards? No, because we the, actually uh, gel. You you can use gel. You it's not necessary, and um, yeah, it's not so good for the semen. Yeah, so I think. And also the the, and also the bacteria. Oh, no. and the, you're gonna wash the stallion, of course, every time before collection. But sometimes if a stallion doesn't collect in the in the first time, and he jumps up a, a couple of times on the phantom. And you always have a little bit dirt inside, and you don't want to get dirt in, in contact with the semen. Yeah. So always put a filter in the ear equine collection bottle. Yeah, and uh, that's the best thing to do. So we're trying to you get all different types of filters. We get these disc filters that work really, really well. They're nice and they're fairly cheap. You use a lot of these, don't you, Bart? Like yeah, two or three thousand. <laughs> <laughs> I need the ear. Yeah. So you literally push it round your bottle like this, get an elastic band, and literally just put it round. And Shirley, can, we, can, you, can you stretch this apart in it? Bit, if you can stretch that apart. Oh, so those nails, I'm going to break those nails down. You won't break those nails. I do AVs all year. <laughs> there we go. And literally, away you go. The other thing we do is we put a little hole in here. And that set, set helps with the vacuum. And also, quite often, we'll put 20 mils of extender. Uh, do you put extender sometimes? Only if I know the ceiling is uh, have not that super good quality of semen, or if he has a uh, really high percentage of uh, so uh, sperms in yeah. less ml, yeah. just to protect and direct. This can make a huge difference. You out there, if, uh, I spoke to a, uh, somebody not so long ago, they, the semen wasn't looking so good after they collected, and I said, just put some extender in there, 20 mils of quality extender that uh, Desiree or one of the other ones, like Indra or whatever, in the bottle, and it can amaze it, it can make all the difference uh, when you're collecting off the sand. Yeah, for the quality is super because then um, you can you have always the same color like this, like the sperm yeah. looks. If you start with inner or it doesn't matter, then you have already the right color and you don't know how it's looking. So that therefore is. its quality is my the best to use. You can get other filters, and these these work. Very well when you've got stands with fine gel. These are really good, but these are quite expensive. So we only use these every now and again. But we tend to use these stiff filters that work really well uh, uh, for it. So it's called an inline filter. Uh, the next thing we want to do is prepare this AV. And I would say, using lube, I'd say this is the next biggest mistake that people make when they're lubing their AV. I've been to some places where they put so much lube. I know you don't use any with yours, but with these we have to. No, because of the line. If you have a line, right. you don't need. So literally, it's a five pence piece. So they don't need to use any more of that. Put it around your hands, put it in your AV, work your hand in and out. This is still a bit tight, so what we do is we just let it bit out, 
and uh, away we go. So. And obviously, you can double check it's non spermicidal. Louis. Yeah, yes, very not, good. Not point. just any, look, yeah. but it has yeah. to be non spermicidal. KY okay. is good, and you can send your granny to Bob for you in the city. <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, so, there are lots of different gels, but it's really important to make sure they're non spermicidal. You can get uh, the other things we can very quickly. You can get condoms or horse condoms. You can actually use human condoms, believe it or not. Um, so um, uh, for this, so you can actually use this to put them on. They go inside the mare, collect off the mare, and get them off with that. But again, that's a real last resort uh, from that. Is there anything else I've missed out on here? I feel like we're yeah. Nicola's got one question. She just said, just could you just go over what exactly the filters are for? Right. Like, how do you collect through the filter? So you'll see it in this next one. So the stallion will ejaculate. It will go through. The gel will stay up here. And the debris and smegma will come here, and the and the semen will go through here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We, uh, um, so hopefully that helps, Nicola. Uh, remember, you can always give us a call, Shirley, Desiree, Bart, or me. We're always at the end of the phone. We're always willing to help uh, on, on this side as well. Right. We've been given the hurry up now for uh, to go into the collection area. I think the stallion's ready. So we will head in. I think first thing they're going to wash the stallion up. But right. Someone in? So this is Clippy. This is Josh Stallion. He says hi. Um, we're going to wash this stallion off. Now, these tiny little things, if you can take away some of these things tonight about filtering the semen as the stallion ejaculates, washing the stallion's penis off beforehand, so important. Desiree, why is it important to wash the stallions off before we collect from them? Yeah, you want to work with clean semen. Always, always wash the stallion and don't use any soap or whatever. I never do. I only use a little bit uh, warm water and I only clean uh, the place where the AV is coming. So I want to have clean semen. I want to process clean semen. And that's why we wash all the time. And every stallion. And uh, yeah. And some stallions, I was speaking to, uh, I'm not going to mention the countries now because it might give them away if they are, but they said they find it really difficult to wash some stallions off. Yeah. Um, but, Got a poll question. Oh, what's the poll question? Uh, yeah. So, uh, washing off, is it? Yeah. What are the poll questions there? Yeah, that's a good one. Do you wash your stallion off beforehand or, or not? So we're quite good on the poll question. Right. Let's get through the food minutes. Right. So. Over here, Josh, can you explain a bit about what you do? You have to talk loud and turn. So, we're going to take on the back of my hands. We go shoulder to shoulder, shoulder, keep my feet in line with him. So that way, he can't kick me or knock me over or anything like that. You're going to make sure there's no hair getting on my hands. So, you use the back of my hand. We grab near the end of his penis. And then, this is just plain water. I'm going to go from the top and work the way down. Now, if he was a new stallion, I wouldn't use too much water, just getting him used to it, because I might just kind of like dab him with it like this. But because he's used to being washed off, I use lots and lots of water, make sure it's really, really clean. And I also check around to the end of his urethra here, make sure there's no beans or anything inside of there. So plenty of water, it's nice and clean. And then I'm going to get some tissue. I'm just going to dab him dry. And that way, none of that water is going to get mixed in with the semen. So that's actually that. an important point, isn't it? Yeah. Drying them off. Drying them off. Yeah, yeah. Uh, right. You better get here. I think he's, yeah, he's ready to go. Remember, this stallion, we're going to attempt to do a ground collection of this stallion now. We have done him a few times before, but sometimes he does, he does, he does fail. So if we do fail collections, <laughs> well... It, it, yeah, we know all about failed collections, don't we, Desiree? They, they sometimes happen. Yeah, and there's always with people around. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do, you, do you do ground collections much, Desiree? No, I don't do ground collection. Only one stallion, but uh, I don't do it much. No. And why do you do it with that stallion? Uh, because it's better for him. Because uh, yeah, then he doesn't hurt himself that much, and yeah, yeah. Uh, he's keep a little bit quiet. But uh, coming back from this washing place, because some people had difficulty to wash the stallion. 
Yeah, yeah, that's true. You know, and sometimes they are very nervous in the breeding stats. You know, they see the mare, they know exactly what's been done. And especially uh, stallions with a lot of blood, like Arabian stallions. If they are ready and you want to wash them, just take them away outside where they don't see anything and try to wash them in all pieces over there and do it every time again. And be and have a lot of patience because they have to learn. If you do it every day and they know what to, do, to be done, then it's, but if they don't know what's going to happen and they are in the breeding shed and they get really nervous about everything what's been done, yeah, take them just outside and try to wash them yeah. there. We might come back to the washing off because I think the yeah. stallion's well up for it now. So let's come over here. Um, oh, they lost it. Oh, what? <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Yeah, that's what happens. <laughs> Sorry, the stallion's lost it after all. That's a... <laughs> after all, but we'll carry on talking about washing off. So I think, yeah, because we were saying that some people uh, are so, the stand stallions are so nervous about the, 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 the washing off side of it is that I think sometimes you can go into the stable and start just holding, uh, stroking the stallion's tummy, hold, going around the sheath area, just getting used to being handled in that area. And you'd be absolutely amazed how well they will come to it. There's barely any stallions that we, we can't do. So the young stallions are the opposite. Yeah. I just teach them two, three times to collect. Yeah. Because I don't look, I don't yeah, care yeah, about yeah, this. Yeah. Yeah. Just send them out to learn. And then, if they know the collection, they feel yeah. fine. They yeah. are happy with this. Then I start the wash. Yeah, yeah. So we because do it. then they know that yeah. nothing happens. Yeah. So yeah. I think that's yeah. So we maybe a new, for the study. We had a new study. Yeah. Way. yeah, we try it out. If they're really a bit nervous, we get we get on with the touching. You know, tell us when you're ready, Josh. Sorry, he's ready. He's ready. <laughs> yeah, and he said he's ready as well. So. <laughs> Where do you want him? Yeah. Yep. No. Uh, no. <laughs> we, we all held we all held our breath there. Yeah, and the sound was gone, so I didn't hear anything. So that was very really funny. Yeah, we, we 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 all we all so I have to say that AJ, I have to compliment AJ because she's AJ. doing yeah, she's doing a fantastic job. That is the only way with crown collection. Yeah, get the head a little bit low, you know, that he's making his back round. And that was AG was doing is was fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, getting the head low. Yeah. Yeah. So right, if you want to take him back and we'll talk a bit about the ground collection, a bit more about washing off. So well done, EJ Josh. That was spot on. Well, one down, one to go. So uh, <laughs> the ground collections, why do we do ground collections? Ground collections, if you've got us, we do it for various reasons. If they've got certain hawkish shoes or they're very unstable on the uh, on the dummy. Some we have one stallion that bolts at the dummy so fast that he's going to hurt himself. So we find it's just easier to do a a a, a, a ground collection on that. Do you do any ground collections on yours, Joe? No, never yeah, done it. Oh, yeah. But I, I could do one off Caratino yeah. very easily because he's so fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I from a groom's point of view, for me, I would take your time, Josh. I've never had one ejaculate the same in all years. Yeah. I've never had one do it. Yeah. And I don't want it either. Yeah. So, you know, but you're back to putting money on your stallion. So, yeah. you know, there's a place for it. And it's not in the stable. But as Desiree oh, said... I remember, in that, uh, I remember that some stallions even on the truck did uh, collection. On yeah. the truck, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, ground collection but, on the, in the truck, yeah. But if you, if you want to do ground collections, it's really trying to get the stallion's head to go down. Yeah. Uh, so we quite often use a little box sometimes to put them in. But we do find some stallions, they'd like just to sometimes have the head down and just walk forward yeah, a little bit. That in trouble. Yes. That's a little bit. That, yeah. that, just a little bit. And it really helps. If you keep that head up, they come down, they don't like it. So. But I have you to know, say, even, I was even with... Even if they get the head up, yeah. they start, because if you push the vagina and they get on the stomach, on the side, that's the reflex, and then they look away. So therefore, yeah. you have to be careful. 
And of course, they have to drop their head when they're on the planet to ejaculate. Don't exactly. They don't exactly. ejaculate yeah. with their head in the air. No, yeah. no. Okay. Uh, we have a question coming. What type of stallion, what temperament stallions is more suitable for, for brand The hot one. The hot one, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, they do uh, never do libido because if they have not a good libido, it's tiny in the arts to yeah. Yeah. collect on. Fiber. Yeah, yeah. There's an update to JT well today. Um, but I think brown collections, I have to admit, this is my personal preference. We only do it as a last resort. I think sometimes the backs, it's not always good for the back. You saw that stallion really roaching his back up. I think doing one-offs is fine. Uh, but if you do it every single day, I think it is very stallion dependent. But some stallions can do it every day. It's not a problem. But the ideal thing is to jump on a, on a dummy mare to, to do that. you agree? For sure. And even also for the one who is doing the collection. Because I have few, but at the end of the day, you feel it in your back. Do you do a few, Grandpa? I do a few because, okay, sometimes they are hurt. I have a stallion who is hurt in the front leg. Yes. He cannot go and make this on the front leg. So then you think, okay, to protect this stallion, you do on the ground. Yeah. You try and then he do. But and you have stallions, they are from the way, from the stable. What you say from the way to the same yeah. here? They are yeah. too bad. They just go up and down in their fights. Then maybe it's easier to keep them not in their box, but in the stable. Um, we put them under the scenario. Yeah. They are nice one. Put them left, right, and then collect and finish. But at the end, if you always do the ground collection by yourself, if you have 10 people, then you can change. Yeah. It's hard work for your back. Yeah. yeah. Just so say, yeah, no, no, it is hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hard. It's your back and the stallion is hard. Also, yeah, yeah. Um, Just before we go much further for the next stallion to come in, we've got to thank, obviously, Quattro again uh, for sponsoring it. I don't have used Quattro at all. As well. no, no, they're, no, they're, no. It, they, they've done all the rubber matting in, in here uh, on, on the walls. They've done the flooring uh, and they've done the, the soft matting. I, 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 yes, they sponsored tonight, but I cannot recommend Quattro products enough. Uh, if you are rubberizing uh, your stables um, that we've been dealing with for years and years, and Aiden at Quattro is absolutely first rate. So I would always recommend. Uh, if you do use them and you see them tonight, please say that Thomas recommended it. Because it always, <laughs> hopefully that's what the next year as well. So, yes. so thank you for that um, on that side of it. So the collection area, uh, let's go over to this. Uh, yeah, let's go to this board. So we have... Uh, over here, it's all about value. Someone's got their names on here. So then just make sure we can't see the names on there. I think that's about right now. Oops, maybe not. Right. Uh, anyway, so can you see that okay? Yeah, yeah. 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 So we have all the, the, the collection type where they go on the dummy or whether they go on, on a teaser mare. We have what height the dummy is going to be. Um, whether they need a pusher or not, what the libido is. The libido score, we do one to five. Um, he's obviously quite, he's four, he's quite keen. Um, he's put a good good boy. Uh, I see this one's 4.5. I didn't know we were doing 0.5s <laughs> now, so that's getting a bit picky on the libidos. Uh, and what size are they? He's keen, but it's all over very quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is, yes. Uh, so but this is really important. This can be a dangerous area for stallions so it's really knowing what that stallion likes it, and it's so important when you come into that breeding area and i think you may know this but you know every stallion is slightly individual yes they could be similar but it's knowing what that stallion likes uh, and how how uh, whether it needs to be quick whether it needs to be more teasing uh, and, and things like that so to get that first collection and that first collection is really important so hopefully this next one will because you know what happens but if we get failed collections what happens with the next collection we'll see um, if we have cell collections, we put them away for a moment or wait a little bit that it's not too hot. Then the semen gets worse, you get much more fluid, uh, and we don't want that stress. So we want to have the good quality, therefore it's less stress. The fail collection is stress yeah. at the end. So it's better to do, to read the stallion and to know exactly what he wants. Try to do this way. Also, with the times, if you start early with this day, keep early with this day. If you have one day, you take in the afternoon, you take him in the afternoon, 
that they get on the line. Yeah. Everything what makes them always do the same is help them to get fine, feel fine and good, get good team. Is there a question? We've got several. Um, so back on to the libido um, topic. How do you grade the libido? What are the things ah. that you're looking for? So we we it's just our grading. It's not a, a universal. One, one cup of coffee or two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So um, uh, one of the most frustrating things in a stud season is when you come into the breeding shed and it takes hours to get the stallion going. That gets everybody mad. Uh, but so you can never get mad. Well, that's you're right, Shirley. Yeah, and that's, that's the thing. Golden rule. If as soon never, as you feel stressed, ever take it out of the stallion. Yeah. So the stallions will feel stressed straight away. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So the but therefore, uh, my people in the lab, if I go in the lab and I don't say nothing, they know the stallion don't work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do they drink your coffee then? <laughs> Is he ready? Well, sure. So, yeah. so, so the beta we do at one to five. So we say an ordinary stallion. That's basically what you call an ordinary stallion. One that comes in, teases within a few minutes. And mounts the dummy fairly in a nice controlled manner. We call that a three. That's an average parameter. Ones that are quite a bit keyed, we call a, a four. The ones that bolt at the dummy and you can't control, we call them a five. The ones that just take that quite a bit longer to do, we call them a two. And the ones, oh well, we don't really want to talk about ones because we don't want them. they can take forever. Uh, we have never had a well, we maybe had a zero, but uh, yeah, I, I've, I've had I've never had zeros, but I've definitely had ones, but. Oh Is yeah, it, I yeah. Doing so what do you yeah? That's good. Literally, sit down, a cup of coffee. Even while you're stood there, decent. Yeah. I will take a coffee out if I know I've got a slow boy. Yeah. So, yes. Yeah, so what do you do, Desiree? If you've got a got one with Paul Abida, because it is a big uh, issue. Yeah, yeah. A patient. Patient is the common rule in a breeding set. I'm really saying, and sometimes you have to change the people around the stallion as well. Sometimes that works very good, but sometimes, like Shirley already said, some stallions need more than half an hour. I had one stallion, he was had a need in half an hour. He didn't do it before. And I just leave him alone and he was okay. And he made prepare, prepare himself ready. And uh, it takes an half an hour. And if you know that, then you take a crap of cup of coffee and uh, yeah, you're gonna catch him. But Paul Lubido is, I had one stallion that was really difficult and you could st stand there for more than two hours and he didn't want to collect, he didn't make himself ready. And you can, we did everything, we tried everything. And then sometimes if they are ready, what you can do is then uh, make sure that you control or keep the stallion straight uh, after the, the phantom and then put the, uh, the AV on the, on the penis and try that they, yeah, try to jump. Yeah, you can put and the penis, put the AV on the, on the ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and something yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you, so they can jump on the phantoms. That is something you what you jump. can do right. for a lever. Sorry, Desiree, to cut you off. No worries. So, this is a, a three year old stallion. We are slightly chancing it tonight. Um, uh, uh, but, uh, um, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, come around. And this is Bart. This is a, this is a horse by uh, Win Win. Um, and, uh, Bart, are you, a, you might be able to talk about the reins that you, they've got this rain system that they use in, in, in Germany quite a bit in your place. Yeah, my place I do this because now I'm here with the shoulder. So if he tries to work with his front feet, I am out of the dangerous line. If he tries to kick, I am out of the dangerous line. So here he cannot do anything. And the good thing is I can manage them that he comes control straight away to the front foot. Maybe no. Maybe too late at night. You need to see the mayor at all. Anyway. So what do you two legends think on visual stimulation on different colour mares that you use? Yeah, I, I we use different mares. We we we've got a, a whole selection of teaser mares. Uh, so um, come forward this way a bit. So we have, and, and they, can, they can really make a big difference. The different type of mare we find sometimes for certain certain mares. Yeah, some stallions prefer the field mare. 
and I've had stallions the other way that actually prefer one that's clipped out and looking like a pretty girl. Yeah. yeah. And definitely colour. I mean, grey, I think, is the most popular. But I, I, think, I had one with chestnut only. I think he's watching us a bit too much. So we'll come over here. So, he might just talk a bit quieter now because I think he's just... So I don't know whether you can still hear me, but basically we'll have Josh will be commentating and telling um, Bart whether his penis is coming out or not and how it's going. Because it's quite hard for the stallion handler to see what that stallion is doing. We, we do the same thing. We say he's peeping, and then once yeah. he's fully drawn, so we call it sensitive. We do it sensitive. So yeah, we do once they're out. So again, it's getting the stallions. So they're nice and erect, but when you wash them off, again, this is a very young stallion. We've, we've only been doing it for a few weeks, but he seems, uh, he's, he's been very good. When he first started, he was a bit keen at the dummy, but now he's, he's, he's much, much better. Do you want a mess, top door shut or window? Yeah, close it now. Close it. Yeah. Yeah, so he's still good. Um, so as I say, yeah, he's getting a bit distracted with Stallion, really, but he's good. So Bart's got the, the double rain system on, on him. Do you want the mayor's top door open? Yeah, he likes that. So, so, so I, I, yeah. And this stallion used to used to rush the gun a little bit, but. Okay. Well done. Well done, Bart. So, this is a three year old, or just rising three and a half. Bart, Bart, where you go? Bart, where you go? Let's talk about the rain. Okay, okay, yeah, good. This, so, this is it. It's, not, it's a little bit short, maybe. It's like normal launch, only half. So we buy one launch, we make two of it. And it's just easy because now I can manage the horse by just going to the right, to the left, keep him straight. We don't want, if we want to go back, I go with him backwards. If we want to go forward, I can manage that he go forward straight because I'm always here with him. It cannot be dangerous for me. So it's very easy that you can handle. But if you do only like here, what you see a lot of people doing, like here in one row, what's happening? They are standing here, then push like this, but do the stallion do? Go up and you come in the front of the stallion. So to protect yourself, it's much more better to do the two lines and stay and where I was now, 
on the short water flight. Yeah, that's good, Bart. Yeah. question about this? No, I'm just saying it, it works especially well. It took me a while. Uh, we were always one, one rope for years until, yeah. until I met this great guy. And uh, it took, I hated it for start because it takes a bit to get used to it. But then, oh, sure. then you start getting used to it and you suddenly realize the stallion is. Yeah. And this is a young stallion. He's getting better and better on the dummy. Uh, and it just shows how you can control. And he was rushing the dummy, the stallion. But now. Yeah. First, I did now the first, second time. I did for two, uh, two days the first time. Then he wants to run, but I give him a little bit of control. Yeah. And then he feel fine and he feels safe. And you see, like today, he goes slowly yeah. and feels yeah. fine. Yeah. Good. Yeah. What a lovely temperament. Super. Yeah. And yeah. super. He, he's by wingman. He's by wingman. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So good afternoon. Super good. Yeah. Well, thank you, Josh and EJ. I know EJ, you haven't been feeling the best. So yeah. I really appreciate you going out. So. Yeah. So thank you, Josh. No problem. Well, we've got still quite a bit to get through. We're going to, we're going to talk about how we train them on the dummy now and things like that. We've got some videos to show you. I think Bart's off to the, I don't know where Bart's off to now. He's gone. He's gone. Um, <laughs> well, hey, Desiree, have you seen our new rubber mat we've got here? Um, this is a, we've got a new one that really sinks in to, and gets extra grip now. So we got yes. this from, from Mark Speller in France, actually. So it looks, it's good. Uh, really Mark. Yeah, it looks yeah, amazing yeah. because that is the that is the most important thing if you let uh, Stellin jump yeah. on on the phantom. The ground is so important. I sometimes come to places <coughs> stone and never do that. People, the horses need to get a little bit of grip, you know, when they are on the phantom and don't and, they, and trust that it's okay that they be there. If they got slippy or they get slip away, <laughs> then everything is uh, yeah. You take all the trust away from the Stellin. You don't want to do, have that. So the ground is so important. Yeah. You, you, you're right. All these little things are so important. You think, yeah, some stallions can do it anywhere, but these tiny little things. We've only had this in for about two or three months, and it has been brilliant. Was there a question? Thank you. Right, <laughs> come on. Fire so we've got um, someone asking, why do you collect from the left? Wouldn't it be easier to funnel the horse between two handlers as he approaches the phantom um, and then ever have stallion paint? Uh, I've had, yes, yeah, so one of, if you have something, yeah. what says you It's bloody horrible. <laughs> yeah. uh, so it's usually at the point of ejaculation, and I think it's the endorphins. They've released so many endorphins, literally, as they ejaculate. And, you know, they go back and think of England and fall off the back of them, <laughs> which is it's horrific when it happens. Um, they fell asleep. Always keep an eye on their eye, because you can actually see the eye glaze over just before it's going to happen. But uh, we, I see sometimes we see the stallions go like that and we give them a slip. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Now, uh, now we, I we start, know. If we think they're going to, we just you know, wake them up. Some, some, but it happens very rarely. It's about like, if you ever see the stallion faint on the dummy? So from the dummy. On, on the dummy. And the, uh, faint. Yeah, it happens if they are really young. Yeah. First time, second time, then we start. Yeah. But normally, yeah. Um, so, so um, what was the other question? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I heard something you say about why on the left side. Yeah. Yes. Because yeah, it's important. It's one, yeah. Quite, quite easy. I love to do on the same side where the 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 handler, the, handler. the collector, the handler of the stand because the handler. If something happens, he will never push the head away. He will try to hold the stallion. If you hold the stallion, you get the head to him, to the left side. You turn the back feet to the right. And then, then the collector is under it. <laughs> if, then he, the collector is under it. And that's dangerous. So always try to do from this. Sometimes you have to do, if you do from the right, and it's a stallion who is not really safe because you don't know what he's doing, then I prefer to take two people, one left, one left. Yeah. Just to save the collector. That's important. So safety first with everything. And the leader is really important. Uh, Whoever's leading the horse. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, so there you need someone to collect small bills. Yeah. 
Okay, the agent will be there, but they should they can collect. But the leader who has the thing to teach the study, to show what is the study, that should be somebody who has a good feeling for the study and knows what he's doing. But we do with some stallions, we do find that question. We collect, I'd say, 90% of the stallions on the left side, but we find some stallions are quite weak. Remember, when they jump on the dummy, they can, uh, it's different muscles, different parts of the body they're using that never normally been used. And sometimes you can feel them go. So there are some stallions just prefer to be collected and on the other side. And we, even some stallions, I change. Yes, yes, yeah. agree. We change, yeah, yeah, we change. Because also the yeah. riders, they yeah. say, okay. It's yeah. too much like this, and so, then we change. So yeah, you, we you, again, like Shirley said, you've got to go with what that stallion feels like, what that vibe. So some we always start on the on the on the left hand side, the near side. But some we will collect on the on the other side. So training your stallion onto the dummy. I think Amy's got some videos now to show. So okay. you have. I think we do it roughly the, the same way. The only thing with yourself, you train all your stallions to jump straight on the dummy. We quite often jump off. Stallions onto a live mare to start with because we've got to do the process much, much quicker. Uh, and once we jump on live mare, then we transfer them across. But um, with yours, where, have you got that first video to play how um, how you can do it? You, play, you might have to bring the play, Clark and maybe talk, show you to see the video. Okay. Get to play now. So you can talk through this. So this looks, this looks like a young stallion who is not knowing what to do, but we have a teaser mare, but we don't let him jump on the teaser mare. So you see, he's not really fine what he has to do. Now he jumps and then we have to get him over. But you can see, we don't know exactly what to do. But finally at the end, we find a way and we'll collect. And that's what we do. We take the teaser mare away so that he learns the phantom is the only way he can follow. And then he feels fine. Yeah, I trained straight into the phantom as well. I tried to. I thought you said them all lots to train, Shirley. No, you, you only get the other <laughs> ones. <laughs> or if I haven't got enough sea power, then I will always send them to you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think EJ is brilliant, obviously. Yeah. So, no, you no, we, we, so just so you <laughs> speak about get straight on the front door. It's also very important to have a look at the stallion. The high of the front. Yeah. Too high is dangerous because they can fall. Too slow is not good. They can go over. I think we have a video, I don't know, where, where it's too deep, yeah. first one, and he almost goes over. Is that another video that you've got? I playing? think. We hey, have if you got another I one, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, if you see here, it's too small. So he do a super good job. The teaser mare is gone, but it was too deep. So he's all hanging around on the front of the phantom. Here in England, it's more easy because the phantom has a neck, but we don't have a neck on the phantom, so they can go off. Yeah. So that is very important to see which bit high you use for the phantom. So let's get to the height of the jump. You get asked a lot, what height should we be? And I think again, like Bart said, I think you've got to find out again, just because he's 16 hands, that does it have to be, and that you can have a 16 hand stallion, and it might be lower for a one 16 hand stallion. For another. What are they comfortable with? If they've got uh, bad pox and things like that, uh, actually, we find this personally, it's better to be, yeah, so, it, well, we find actually. It depends on the angle of attack, so it, it's, it's putting the strain on. So it depends on what injuries they got, depending on how high, whether you want the body to be lying on this, or you want more on their back legs. The other thing is we find if it's too low, sometimes they go so far up, their back legs come off the ground, and that's very dangerous because then when they go back, they can, because they, but so they need to have the, the, the weight on the ground. So, um, but, Generally, yes, it's, it's uh, I suppose, I think we go slightly higher than maybe you do in Germany. We yeah. always have it a little bit higher, uh, but I think that's down to personal preference, but we find... Yeah, in my place, it has to do with the riders, because they always say, if it's so high, the knees and the, the back, they, they think it's bad. They're quite right. Yeah. So I try to get them as deep as possible, 
that they feel fine and that there is less pressure to yeah. the um, So, what we tend to do is quite often jump on a tease mare to start with, but that might be possible. Quite often, what we we'll do is bring that Oh, she's in heat. <laughs> she's in heat. <laughs> so we quite often put a teaser mare here, and we'll have the stallion this side. Yeah, she's so in heat. Yep. Yeah. So we'll have a teaser stallion here. The teaser over and you'll be surprised that the stallion straight on. So we put the teaser mare one side, and this is a really good way of getting them on. But you've got to have good control of the stallion. Yeah. Have you got any more videos or the audio video done? I think, uh, I think we have even a video with a teaser there, but I'm not sure what we have. Amy, have we got any more or are we, are we done? No, we have one more where the stallion don't know that he can jump on the phantom. Yeah. So therefore, if we have a stallion who don't know that he might jump on the stallion on the phantom, this, for example, is an uh, older stallion, seven years old, six, seven. He's sold, he should be teached because he sold as a breeding stallion. Um, he didn't do before, so we teach him now. And then, therefore, uh, he has to learn and he don't know what to do. So, at the end, we will give him the vagina and then he will jump on But it is not him. I think that this is, is, yeah. okay. no, no. is a young one who, I think, who already did one or two times with, with the mare, and now he takes and he do by himself. You see, now he do by himself. So this is the second or third collection. But you see, if they learn good, they just stay there, start, and do a good job. Yeah. No, no problem. So I maybe we have the one video where we give the vagina. It should be a chest one. Yeah, there. He don't know nothing. And this way, and he is a little bit scared of the front. You see already, he is running away from the front. So he's not really happy with this. So then we wait till he is concentrated. Then there is my teaser mare. My teaser mare has rope. That's easier. That's one wheel. Oh, it's a wheel. Yeah, I can drive. I can drive. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> is your teaser mare as well in season? <laughs> so it takes a little bit of time, then he starts, and he can see he's not, he feel not so fine with the front one. So, therefore, I go there carefully, just give him the vagina, and then just wait. And if he has the vagina, you will see he will start with his body. And then finally, he will jump on the front row because it's the natural reaction. So, if you put the AV on the ground then? No, till now, not. I have it in my hand, but at the moment, he is too much yeah. okay. playing around with me and not. So, we have to feel fine that I'm there. So now, I give him the vagina on the ground. On the ground. Yeah, this yeah. works really well. If you do this, this, yeah, this. so then as he goes and to the they start, they start to yeah, push. But. It takes a little bit with this one, but you will see behind my head, he will come over with. You see now he starts, yeah. and then he come over. So, and then they lost, they lost the, the, the freightness for the phantom, and they do their job. Yeah, yeah. So that are a few parts, how you can manage it. That's uh, really, it's really good to see that, yeah. So uh, are we back on us now, Faye? Yeah. Yeah, so I think, so we put the, 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 the important thing I always say to that is try and have the stallion fairly lined up with the dummy. Yeah. Putting the one over here is, is, is not, as, not as good. So the fairly lined up, so they literally two thrusts and they can jump up. Yeah. So it works well. The other thing you have to watch out for, I don't know what to say with your AV, some stallions curl their front legs around here, and when they thrust in, they can hit the AV on their front foot. Yeah. So it's something, you, and when they do that, they hate that so much, and they can bruise the end of the penis. So be very careful when they thrust in, but when their hook, the foot comes around, they don't get hit either. So, yeah. Okay. Right. What's this? Inside? Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Our pizzas are arriving in a minute. Pizza and prosecco. So, yeah. Good. Hungry. <laughs> right. Go on it. So we've expected we've got Pam on that manager. Yeah. No, I'm not telling you not to hide away here. Our crew over here. Pizza. Yeah, we've got the pizza in a minute. So <laughs> right. So we've the seam we've kept it before. So we're not going to go much too much into seam and assessment tonight, but just prove that we did get the uh the the, uh, the collection um earlier. How much did you give us, Pam? He gave you 19 mil. Yeah. And one of the ways you can assess this is using the iceberg, which is, can you fire that up for us, Pat? Which is an amazing bit of kit. So up there, we look at that, we might say, oh, it's 60%, but now we've got a device on an iPad called the iceberg. And it, and it can actually, you put the, a dropper on a, on a, what's called a chip, and you put it in the back of this device, and it is amazing. It tells you the concentration, it tells you the motility, it tells you the progressive motility, uh, and all that's incredible. And uh, is it foolproof? Well, long as you, you want me to buy one, it's got to be <laughs> well. It's well, about well, well, I'll tell you what, it, yeah, if you push the boundaries, yeah, well, no, it's even surely proof. Oh, <laughs> that's that phase of it. Uh, so no, it is. It works. We went and collected off uh, seven Clydesdales up in Scotland. We did 30 collections, brought it back here, put it through all our other bits of equipment, and they were spot on. And, and Desiree, you can get them uh, from Desiree or Bart uh, uh, if you're abroad, and ourselves. Yeah. Tani, Tani actually said, Oh, Tani. Uh, yeah, she said it has it's changed the, the way they process semen completely, the ice firm. Oh, well done, Tani. Well, Tani, hopefully, uh, I'm coming to see you when I come to South Africa with a bit of luck. That's in July. So, uh, if we're still up for that, I'm um, coming to, to your place. They've got a, a nice sport horse stud out in South Africa. When we do the rhinos, we can go and do the others. Any other questions, Faye? Well, there are a few, yes. I think we finish off with a few questions before the pizzas get too cold. Yeah. Somebody's asked, um, uh, Osama actually asked, how much extender do you put uh, into the, um, the bottle bottom? before collecting? Yeah. Well, I think uh, when it comes to extender, we've got a really good extender here uh, called uh, Quality Extender. We like this. It's great for shipping semen out and great for centrifugation. But I'll let Desiree answer this one because she is the extender queen, if that, that's the right terminology. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> uh, so how much extender would you put in the bottle? It depends really on the stallion. If the stallion has a very low volume and a very high concentration, I prefer to do 10 cc in a bottle. And um, if a stallion, if you just want to get a little bit of booch before, you know, before the collection, then I use 2 cc till 5 cc. But if it's very small, a very high concentration, 10 cc, yeah, that's the most common thing to do. I think you can even go up more. Yeah, so we go up to 20 sometimes. Yeah, uh, and, uh, all these yeah. little tips. We have to buy this stuff, you know, so you can. <laughs> <do it. laughs> oh, that's really good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, the shepherd girl has got more money; they can use them. So, uh, but no, uh, the if, is fine. if you're fr freezing off stallions and demon stallions, I promise you, all these little tips tonight. You sort out its pain. You sort out its stress. Get it fit before the collection. You wash the stallion up beforehand. You filter the semen as he actually ejaculates. You do that collection, get it on that first time. You can put extender in the bottle. I can promise you, you'll see a totally different result at the end, whether you're processing for fresh, chilled or frozen. You're going to get a much, much better sample. Yeah. Uh, sorry, another question. How many uh, tries do you allow a stallion um, if he gets distracted before you call it a day? I must admit, it depends on the stallion, really, on the, on the age of the stallion. It's a young stallion, you've got to take your time. I've slightly changed our way. We used to collect off stallion, got a fail collection, we put up and go again. I have to admit, I like putting them away for five or ten minutes just to get them to think about it. Uh, um, some stallions you can do again, but, yeah, we, we, we can try a few times through the day. What would you, what would you say about this? Sometimes you have to try a few hours because you need for the customer. So. Yeah. <laughs> Then you have a problem, you get stressed, yeah. yes, yeah, it's uh, happening. Normally, I think, if to you, if you teach them well, and are not too fast. So don't think, so for today, we, the states were waiting long enough yeah. before you let them jump. 
So just if they are good handling, just think, okay, he's down, just let go. Wait yeah. till they are really good in leave go and finish, concentrate on the fast down, and then nine out of ten will do in just one jump. So I think yeah. relax, relax, keep cool, and then it's better. I think yeah, we'll be, uh, be aware just with, with young stallions, the first time it's got really influence of the rest of his life. You know, if you take all the time, the first jump, the first collections, if you take the time, if you make them trustful for a collection, then you have a fantastic stallion for the rest of your, for the rest of his time. If you do it too much and if it's not handling, then it's going to be worse, worse because the first times are so important. I, I, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm tired to say something, but I'm dead. I'll get into trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I can hardly imagine. Oh, dear. Um, we but, don't want uh, to well, hear your first time, Stullis. No. <laughs> 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 I better not say that. Right? No, 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 no. So, uh, anyway, one, one more question, Bay, and then we're, I think our pizzas are ready. Um, how do you clean an AV after you use it to avoid bacteria transfer? Quite interesting. We're just trying out a new, uh, actually, disinfectant for us. You have liners in yours, so yeah. it's much easier to do. So you put your liner out. Uh, do you, how do you you've got a certain process for you? Uh, scrub yeah. just with water, nothing yeah. else, and then sterilize with milk and sterilize with fluid. Yeah. You know, probably shouldn't say the brand, should I? <laughs> no, you're right. Other brands are available. Yeah, yes. Of course they are. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but uh, yeah, we try all, uh, we're trying a new disinfectant actually at the moment. We used to use hippie scrub, you've got to be careful of that. If you don't wash it out properly, that will kill the seed knot as well. And any, any questions from our guests tonight? Come on, there must be something out there. Louis, yes, have you got any questions? <laughs> Uh, I'll, I'll, Who's going to get me on Big Brother last time? Well, we're getting on Big Brother. So, if you've got anything, what, 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 how do you like your scene when it's delivered? Uh, <laughs> 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 okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, I don't know. That's putting him on the spot, isn't it? Yeah. Bloody hell. Good answer. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, well. Uh, we're going to finish off tonight. It's been a great night. The Stallions have to admit have performed amazing. We thought we might have a fail fetch. Bart says when you take them out of the comfort zone, Bart starts his flex at four in the morning. And you have to train your Stallions to flex at that time early in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're not yeah. used to it. They don't. Yeah. We, okay. Now at the moment, it's not so such a busy time. So we start at the normal time. But in, in the middle of March or to the end of March, we go forward, um, so forward it means from yeah. six to five p. Yeah. So then we switch the time to summer time. So it's quite early, um, but if you have the stands in the line, they get to do between four and five. Then they will do it on this time. They are used to, it. and the stands you do at ten. You don't take them at four o'clock. You will send there at five hours, not five, but maybe yeah. two hours because he's confused. So it's very important to do all the time. They don't think what you're doing, but they learn the rhythm. And that's very important to do always the same rhythm, to feel them, to get them through. Yeah, it's, it's, it's routine, routine. Yeah, routine. Exactly. yeah, the creatures have had it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, but really, uh, sort of closing down to so thank you all. Thank you, Bart, for coming all the way from Germany, from Shockham Others, to give your amazing expertise tonight. It really is. It is incredible your knowledge, what you've got. We've only just had a drop in the ocean uh, of what you know, so I really appreciate it. Thank you, Desiree, behind the camera there. We, I feel like missing uh, you here tonight. What yeah. a bloody shame that I'm not there. Yeah. Well, yeah, next, yeah. I'll be. next time I will be. And I drink, take my pupsy with me, you. Did you, did you drink your pupsies? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. The pupsies. Where are they? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially oh. give it to me to drink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you brought these special drinks. Uh, yeah, very uh, nice. Yeah. yeah. So, um, um, and Shirley's driven five hours or six hours today, all the way from Brendan's stud. Uh, I have to admit, Shirley, you've been a, a really big supporter of Stalin AI for years. Your knowledge of Stalin is. It's amazing. So, no, really appreciate it. I have no knowledge compared to this man. <laughs>
Yeah, he's like the, le the legend. Yeah, uh, um, but, but yes. I would just like to say, you know, if you're not got the experience to collect semen or to leave the stallion, then take him somewhere who is, because you can wreck a stallion mm -hmm. by not being experienced enough to handle him, get him, leave him. Yeah. You know, and, and sometimes you just need help, and you know, never be afraid to ask for it. Yeah, yeah but therefore, I think you. You even offer it. Yeah, yeah. So I have not the time for it, but yeah, we, we it, yeah. So we offer the training so on a dummy. We take, um, but we're all the best folks. So please, wherever you are, all around, around the world, uh, uh, please uh, get in contact. We love setting up labs all around the world. Desiree and Bart and myself, we love doing that. So please don't be shy. If you're struggling to collect the sound, please pick the phone up. We're only at the end of the phone. So thank you for coming tonight. Thank you, Amy, behind the scenes. She's the sort of the unsung hero, but she's put all these together. Um, thank you for uh, Sarah. I know you, Sarah's done all the putting it. Uh, have a spin around and see Sarah. Sarah, thank you tonight. And the That's team, good. Pam, Kate, and, and the backing crew that we got here tonight. Yeah. What about uh, India? Uh, and India, India behind the camera. <laughs> and we've got Faye on the questions. I always miss someone off, so I, I feel bad about that. Uh, don't forget your 25%. I can't believe we're giving 25% off five star fertility but anyway we are so 24 hours remember for that uh, oh we've got our stallion show coming up on the 22nd of april some of the best stallions in the uk um are coming up to it so come and see that uh, you can get your general admission tickets now online at seven pound fifty and there are some vip ones i think there's still a few left at 85 pounds it's the 20 seconds to be 30 odd stallions and you've got a Sally show, haven't you? The next, the next day, isn't it? Yeah, well, we're doing a Sally parade the next day, and we're actually doing an open day show in Sally and the Progeny on the Easter Sunday. Oh, the 9th of April. Yeah. For, for that one. So after church. Yes, yes. <laughs> and after picking out an Easter egg. <laughs> yes. So Shirley's got some amazing stallions down there. She really has, so that's well worth it. So, yeah, don't forget the Sally show. Um, and Five Star Fertility. Yeah, I'm trying to think what else. Oh, Sarah does these, these live uh, Friday lunchtime lives at 12 o'clock. Um, so if you want to come see any stallions, just pick up the phone. We're more than happy to show you the round. Um, and we've got some amazing, exciting new stallions. If you're looking for a stallion this year, just give us a bell, whatever it is. Hopefully we can um, fulfill uh, your needs and find out that stallion for you. So, And a lot of them are in your book, of course. Yeah, yes, we've got the book. Where is the book, Sarah? So, where is that book? We need to show the book before we go on that. And if you liked it tonight, as it was free, but don't forget, Nature Save, if you want to do a donation to Nature Save, go on Nature Save website. We'd love to, even if it's a five, we really, really appreciate that. Every every bit, we've been like Tesco's, every little bit helps. Um, and this is the directory. How many stallions have we got here, sir? 160. 160 stallions in here. It's not just about stallions in here. You can find a stallion of your dreams. This is like the tinder of the horse world in here. Fixed through, swipe right, swipe left. See what you like. Show jumpers, dressage, eventers, all sorts. Also, articles. sorry? Articles. Articles. Um, also, a lot of articles in here as well, all about um, how, to, uh, how to turn the sex of your fall before birth. So I shouldn't be reading these things. So I'm going to say the wrong. Be my dyslexia. I'm going to say uh, what's wrong. Uh, James Crabtree. Yeah, what's new in advanced reproduction? So there's a lot of good articles in here. So I think we're about done. The prosecco is calling. So is the pizza. Um, so if you've enjoyed it, please leave us your feedback. Uh, it's always great to hear. Um, and it's a good night from all of us here. So thank you very much. Good night. Thank you. Bye-bye.